Well, it is afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Ed Gulick. I am the chair of the Northern Plains Resource Council, which is a grassroots organization of Montana citizens committed to protecting our water quality, our family farms and ranches, and our unique quality of life. Northern Plains is committed to the development of clean sources of energy, which provide the power that our society needs to function while preventing the degradation of our air, land, and water, which are absolutely critical to our health, our happiness, and our, our, our livelihoods. We believe that this legislature needs to show a strong commitment to developing renewable energy in our great state of Montana. At this time, I'd like to introduce Representative Margie McDonald from Billings, who is a legislator committed to making this happen. Good afternoon. Last night, our president addressed the American people in a very inspiring speech, and he um, emphasized how important it is that uh, the American economy be at the cutting edge of innovation, of technology, and of clean and renewable energy sources. It is as if, if we fail to do that, we are opting for whale oil, let's say, at the end of the 19th century, instead of moving forward with the energy sources of the 20th century. The 21st century is the one in which we are going to transition to clean, renewable energy sources that will never run out. And Montana is rich and blessed in natural resources of all kinds, but it's critical that the Montana economy transition as well and be on the cutting edge of clean and renewable technologies because those will be the energy sources of the future. I, um, I would like to hold up and lift up um, countries that have done that effectively in Europe, for instance, who 20 years ago um, saw the writing on the wall and began to transition to clean and renewable energy. And in Denmark, for instance, the economy has um, grown over 78% in the last 28 years. And um, over that time, they have been at the forefront of clean energy and are now um, primarily getting their energy from both efficiency and renewable energy such as geothermal, wind. They do a lot of district heating and things like that as well to use their energy resources wisely. But not only is Denmark using primarily clean energy, they are on the cutting edge of technology and they're importing technology and um, innovation to the United States because we have refused as a country to be um, forward looking when it comes to the energy technologies of the future. So that um, uh, in the last, um, uh, in 2009, Denmark um, ex imported into the United States 11 billion U.S. dollars worth of clean energy equipment. And that's really what our leaders need to do and what we're trying to do here in the Montana legislature. So um, keep working hard and let's, let's move Montana into the future with clean and renewable energy that will never run out. Thank you. I would also like to welcome and introduce um, one of the leader, leaders in the Montana House of Representatives who has um, helped uh, guide some of our most innovative energy, uh, clean energy um, bills and strategies. And I'm very proud to have with us today Representative Mike Phillips from Bozeman. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I've had the distinct privilege to serve on the Energy Committee two sessions now. And I can tell you that there are efforts underway to undermine those laws that allow Montana to contribute to an energy future that makes sense. We just heard, for example, a bill that would repeal Montana's wonderfully successful renewable portfolio standard. But we can't repeal that law. If we do anything, we've got to protect it and move it forward. You know, as a biologist, I can find you organisms that don't defend themselves, that don't, that don't move, that don't reproduce. I can't find any organism that doesn't wake up every morning intending to do one thing, uh, capture and assimilate energy. It, it, it is the great big connective process of life and it's the great big connective issue of the 21st century. There is no doubt that because energy use is so pervasive, everything we do is driven by energy. 
uh, it will be a, a wonderful wellspring of jobs. Uh, people a lot smarter than me that are wildly successful in, in the business arena would have you believe that the new energy future will represent the greatest economic opportunity this country has ever seen. Well, that's all well and good. We need to make money. But increasingly, we also see there is a direct relationship between our energy policies and national security. The, the, the military is increasingly saying we are putting the, the boots of men and women from this country on the ground in conflicts zones because of energy policies. And, and on the 2nd of February, myself and Senator Ryan Zinke have successfully invited Vice Admiral McGinn and Colonel Charette from the United States Marine Corps to come and speak in a public seminar that evening uh, from 7 to 8.30 about this relationship between national security and energy policy. Montana contributes uh, more uh, men and women in military service in conflict zones around the world than any other state in the Union on a per capita basis. Clearly, national security, the safety of our troops, and the energy future for this country are critically important to Montana, and I hope folks will show up for that most important seminar on the 2nd of February. So we're not only talking about jobs that put good money in, in people's pockets, good, durable jobs, but these are jobs that will complement the military's efforts to, to make our troops more energy independent in the field. That's a future that this country should work for. That's a future that Montana can play a major part in. And that's why we have to not only defend our laws today, but move them forward in the future. Thank you. I'd just like to close with a few more uh, things to enumerate uh, why Northern Plains sees renewable energy as a great fit for Montana. Uh, we imagine you know, wind tar turbines are sort of like a new crop for our, our farmers and ranchers. It's a steady stream of income uh, and it's reliable, it comes every year, you can count on it. Um, we're seeing uh, some, anywhere between $4,000 and $10,000 coming every year to farmers per wind turbine uh, that's on their property. Um, we also see that the renewable energy development expands the rural tax base uh, in, in, in all kinds of counties. Uh, new wind projects in Glacier and Tool counties, for instance, are expected to contribute $3.6 million to the property tax revenues um, for the, both those counties in 2010. Uh, furthermore, the Judith Gap Wind Farm has contributed $1 million to the, the Wheeland County uh, every year. So this is a, a major source of, of income to our to our uh, rural counties, and it's a source of income. Uh, you know, there are other forms of development where the tax base, sure there is money going into the tax base, but it's used to mitigate the harms of other kinds of resource development. With wind development, it's just money in the pocket. There are no sorts of problems with, with uh, that they need to be mitigated. Um, renewable energy uh, distributes jobs throughout Montana. You know, the typical 100 megawatt farm, wind farm supports anywhere between 100 and 150 uh, construction jobs and about 10 to 15 permanent jobs. Um, you know, Judith Gap, uh, for instance, resulted in 12 permanent jobs. Uh, furthermore, in its construction, 75% of, of the jobs were to local, uh, to Montana contractors. So, if we're talking about jobs, uh, clearly, you know, renewable energy is a great winner for us. So, how do we continue to nurture and expand the development of renewable energy here in Montana? Well, the Renewable Energy Standard, which was passed in 2005, has been a great vehicle. Uh, you know, we're starting to see a lot of the benefits of wind uh, development that would not have happened uh, if we did not have that Renewable Energy Standard. It provided uh, predictability. Wind, wind developers could come here knowing that there'd be a market for it. Uh, it provided stability. So, uh, it, it's provided really great value to us. And there was also provision in it for that some local uh, communities would also benefit uh, by having uh, uh, wind development here and that's really helpful because uh, those are that means small businesses here in Montana uh, are you know, the profit state state so to summarize Northern Plains believes that the legislature will be working in the best interests of the state's citizens by showing a strong commitment to renewable energy development thank you for coming today